Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report and a lot of buzz about the uh, fiscal cliff and one of our top experts who bring on the program regularly is Walter Burian. His website is CAFR1, C-A-F-R-1 dot com, the number one dot com. And uh, Walter, I've heard a lot of buzz about the uh, uh, interviews recently by Lindsey Williams. And he's been on Alex Jones, he's been on Jeff Rents and many other programs. And what he's basically saying, uh, I think it's been not just going on in recent plans, I think this has been going on for decades. It's obviously ramped up into a much higher speed. But there's a lot more uh, to this analysis, and we want to extend it beyond what uh, the expert that told uh, Lindsay Williams what's going on, and to not only that, but real solutions to the problem. So let's, uh, let's analyze what uh, Lindsay is saying. Basically, number one, they're going to try to tax to death or out of existence the middle class. Um, number two, they're basically saying they're going to devalue the currency. He's saying with a formula about 4% per month, which is pretty serious. That's about 32% per year, roughly, if you compound it. Uh, he's saying that which in, in three to four years would basically devalue the dollar to nothing. Uh, he's also saying that there's nations uh, like the, the uh, Asia nations just uh, last month that basically dismissed America that have uh, 50 some percent of the uh, capital in the world, 18 percent of the GDP of the world, uh, and uh, over uh, almost 60 percent of the population of the planet, uh, basically saying they're not going to accept the dollar anymore. And uh, I don't know if I can agree with that because I think the number of, of, of U.S. dollars in circulation makes up 87 percent of the world currency, both in uh, electronic dollars and circulating dollars, and many countries use the U.S. dollar, like Belize, etc., as their currency. Uh, what I see happening is, a, in a sense, a financial war going on, and I don't think that uh, any moves on the part of Asia mean to quote the dollar is dead. I think that, in fact, the exact opposite. What I think see is this debt monster is being grown as a violent uh, move by the Fed Reserve and America and the Western banking elite to actually crush these other nations and force them into line. I don't see it the opposite way. I, I see it as, a, as a, an aggressive war move by the bankster elite. Well, there's quite a bit of information in that uh, comment. I'd like you to kind of just uh, pull it apart and say, see, because what Lindsay is basically saying, yes, the middle class are going to be taxed. We've got Obamacare, which the Federal Supreme Court has stated is a tax, which, uh, according to our experts, we've had them on from uh, various agencies and legal groups like the uh, last week we had on the program uh, Mike Connolly, who's a jurisprudence expert and an attorney from U.S. Justice Foundation, and they have sued some multiple states against Obamacare. Um, many states aren't going to get involved with the exchanges. It is a tax that's going to crush business. A lot of businesses are saying they're going to not have employees uh, more than 29 hours of work because if they give them 30 hours, they have to pay for health, Obamacare or they'd rather pay the penalty, uh, which means the Postal Service, Walmart, and other corporations are only going to have their executive get full hours. Um, I think that this uh, oh. is, a, is a factor, but you know, uh, I don't think you can, quote, tax people out of existence and expect it. I think that, as you, you said to me before the show, they want to rape the middle class. They don't just want to destroy them. Right. Well, let's start with the most important uh, comment first, which would be on taxation. You know, I'll note up front that the people, you know, I, I used to, and quite a few other people, uh, have a very short-term memory. You know, our focus is constantly uh, slammed on, at the present, this is happening now, this week, this month, any time now. You know, we're channeled into a, you know, a very limited time frame for reference. Well, in reality, you know, in reality, uh, not using a short-term memory, but just using your lifetime memory, government's been increasing their taxation each and every year for the last uh, 60 years. Uh, I put out an article recently where I used the Arizona as an example. In 1983, the Arizona, just on the state levels, you know, the state budget was about $2.2 billion dollars. And come uh, 2012, you're up around uh, 60 billion. Uh, so let's see, 2.2 up to about 60 billion. Slight tad bit of an increase there. Uh, what is that? 3,000 percent? Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, so you know, you know, they've been playing that game each and every year, each decade, increasing the take. Just look at it as being the take. Yeah, like a, mobster, uh, 
Right. Like and, the mob and, take, you know, on take. Yeah. And we see also yeah, the, the like, current situation between the Republicans and the GOP, and there's a lot of division now. There really is no need for not one more tax dollar, and you still don't need to destroy the social safety net because they haven't controlled costs. You also don't need there's to no do... Need, fa- there's no need for taxation at all. Zero. Not. Right, right. None. Because the federal investments and state and federal pension funds and cities and uh, basically private and public pension funds that have invested, uh, that don't pay tax like these pension funds from the government, they're not paying taxes. If you mentioned on the show last week, a 2.5% tax... Well, would raise two hundred fifty billion dollars uh, in revenue just in one year. He tax government uh, investment return now, but let's keep it very yeah. simple. Let's keep the focus simple. The, uh, government loves to confuse the hell out of people. Right. This, that, and the other thing, and some sound bite, uh, sound bites thrown at them at the same time to keep them screaming and pulling their hair out. Let's right. keep it simple. You know, government, not just this year or ten years ago or a hundred years ago, but let's go back. You know, several thousand years has always used the population as a productivity resource to be drained and managed. Never has right. been a good thing, never will be a good thing. Now they use whatever, you know, whether it be the Egyptian pharaohs or, you know, the colonies, uh, they always use, we are able to be able to benefit you and we will do this for you, we will do that for you, we will build up an infrastructure that is, you know, amazing to the world and you know, they bring in the uh, majority of the population to pitch in X amount of dollars to accomplish that purpose. Well, uh, you know, if you look at their increase over 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35 years, you know, which is a very short window of time when we're talking all the way back to the pharaohs, you know, the government in the United States has increased its income exponentially, surpassing the population's income at a factor of 10, 20, 30 to 1. Right now, yeah, I I, 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 don't want to call the entire population stupid. You know, they're not stupid. They're masterfully entertained. They're masterfully, you know, uh, guided like minnows in a pond to run that from one end of the pond to the other end of the pond. And in the confusion, these guys just in- keep increasing, 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 and always keep this short-term memory focused on as if the situation is just developing today. You know, it's been going on for thousands of years, and how well they masterfully entertain and play the population is what <clears throat> determines their success in getting away with what they're doing. You know, I just put up a commentary on YouTube. Uh, Bill Windsor, he's running around the country uh, taking people with examples of uh, being targeted in the court systems and destroyed in the court systems. Yeah, I put up a eight-minute segment he did. I did about a 45-minute uh, interview with him. But I bring forward that when it comes down to crime, break with the family, drug addiction, and so forth in this country, collectively, you know, city, county, state, uh, all the aspects, prison systems, court systems, the, you know, attorney complexes, social services that are all tied into it, it's about a $2.7 trillion a year business, the largest industry in the country. Period. Yeah, you take, you take a few of the two from 500 companies, they won't even come close combined together. Right. And, you know, government micromanages their own levels of crime, break of the family, and drug addiction. They constantly, you know, target the population, the easiest marks possible to hit for extortion, you know, as they, in plain language, laugh all the way down to the bank. And the public's being treated as useful idiots, you know, and they're sound by condition. Oh, the crime's this and the drug's this and look at this one case of this person doing this and da 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 Well, one thing that caught my attention two years ago, they came out with the uh, uh, list of uh, prison population, people on probation in the country. Georgia won the uh, prize. Eleven people out of eleven, one was in the jail or in the uh, probation. But we'll, we'll continue after the break, Dr. Cole. Absolutely, uh, and uh, we'll uh, continue this discussion so we get down to the real facts of what the uh, scamtastic array is, a bipartisan raping of the middle class and more. Welcome back, and uh, Walter, we have you back with a little better sound. Um, so let's go back. We're looking at the ancient history of how governments, no matter where it is in ancient Babylon or Sumer, 
how they manipulated the public and used them as a resource. We see this little dance called the fiscal cliff is a dance because bipartisanly they want to walk away uh, politically unscathed, but the public will be saddled with another uh, tax, most likely a federal flat tax or a government services tax like over 60 nations in Canada called GST, and in some provinces they blend it with the provincial sales tax called the BST or blended sales tax. I think that Obama will then, of course, because this is a tax and a tax and a tax on multiple services, it's going to immediately cause inflation. It'll immediately hit the hell out of the middle class and the so-called poor. Uh, and uh, this is going to really be painful. It's not just, when they say it's only to kind of tax the rich, it's ridiculous. The people that are really rich, they have billions, their money is stuffed all over the world in different ways to move it around to foundations and write it off or whatever in different countries. They're they're fine. The, the rich are not going to be hurt by this. The moderately rich, the people that run small business, they're going to be hurt. But the middle class will be crucified by what Obama and the GOP are planning to do to raise taxes. It's just not reasonable, is it? No. Nope. And do, do you know what tax they'd probably create if they thought they could get away with it? What? Which would make them wealthy? Population tax. Population? You mean like a, no, a no, no. head like? Cop, copulation, copulation. Oh, you're talking about, yeah, in other words, how many times they actually have sex? You mean, oh, my gosh. Right. And now, the, now the, the, you have to monitor you how to make sure that you're paying your fair share of the taxes. You know, so. Yeah, well, you know, the, maybe you can get that on, on late night, uh, Saturday Night Live or whatever. The, right. the, uh, uh, let, the carbon taxes, in a sense, is indirect. And we have that in California where they're pushing in carbon taxes. And they have a what's called a tiered system for paying your power and your electric here. So if you use twice as much power, you may pay three or four times as much in the actual fee because your rate goes up, up rather than down because you buy more. It's the opposite like of what would make common sense, that if you yeah. buy more power or water, you're a good customer, uh, they give you a better rate. But no, they raise it because it's called a carbon uh, tax in a sense. And Obama wants to do this to the population, in which will kill business. It'll kill um, a lot of businesses that use more power or water. Uh, these are... <laughs> Yeah, as I said on the break, okay, they have a thousand different taxes from a thousand different angles that have been ever increasing year by year. Right. And it's the whole, you know, you know, they'll, they'll get you pulling your hair. The bottom line is, what they've been doing is increasing their gross income. The yeah, this, the take. it's not. It's you not just. You have, have to look where this is all going, though, Walter. And I, what I, when I heard Lindsay's. Uh, uh, discussion with Alex Jones and on the rents program, what I basically can get to conclusion is he's repeating something that's been going on and crystallizing it, but where it's going is this. We're not heading toward a typical recession depression. We're heading toward slavery and the mark of the beast. We're heading toward indentured servitude and destitution. We're heading to a system where all the electronic divots of all of the exchangeable legal currency isn't barterable, isn't uh, uh, you know, gold and silver coins. In fact, all other legal tender other than electronic currency, uh, when the government finally transitions from tender money, which does, by the way, already have a chip in it, will move to what I call biometric money, where all the divots are in their computer, and if they don't like you, or if they want to tax you, just like Obamacare, most people aren't aware of this, Obamacare allows them to get access to your personal bank accounts. And the real issue of this fiscal cliff, I think, is to have a VAT or value-added tax, which the United Nations and the World Banks want. They want a VAT because they don't like the complex tax structure. They want to be able to reach into your account right. and yeah, every they, transaction they, 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 they and call, have... They call it the uh, fair tax. <laughs> yeah, the fair tax. And, they, and, also, and, and yeah. you hear these politicians try to say, oh, this is so wonderful. This is not wonderful. This is a step toward the mark of the beast. This is a step toward a total control system. Where, yeah. That's it's what an it exercise, is. It's, it's an exercise in this reality. You know, if you have, let's use the word rape, uh, okay? Yeah. Uh, and if we requalified it, and we'll call it social interaction. Mm -hmm. uh, now, a fair tax, there's nothing fair about it. It's simply, uh, you know, the IRS, everyone has been complaining, fighting the IRS. I mean, the IRS is uh, probably the litigation against it is uh, five gazillion pages. Yeah, they've been right. fighting back and forth, back and forth. The IRS is uh, simply a private collection agency contracted out with Congress from the get-go. Right. You know, right. Collect the tax. Now, by creating a uh, what they call a fair tax and uh, dissolving the IRS's contract, they get rid of the, that gazillion pages of the litigation, and you know it's something that's illegal from the first place, never should have been uh, implemented, and. Uh, it was actually only a war or war uh, payment tax, basically. The income tax so they, is the only other taxes. They, they consolidated a very uh, intricate uh, theft into a very simple theft. 
Yeah, in other words, it's all electronic. In fact, in, in various countries like Australia or Britain, you can't get an actual uh, even paper check. It's all electronic funds transfer. And that's the point. What they want to do eventually, and they, most people aren't aware that all the money now has an RFID chip in it already. It has special threads if you put it under UV light or if you put it through uh, x-ray, et cetera, but there's has an RFID chip. And most people think the reader distance is like 80 centimeters, not. They have guns that can hit in directionally and tell you the number of denominations of currency up to 440 meters away, which is like 1,200 plus feet. So people need to be aware that what the government wants is a total biometric matrix. And they want to transition through a value-added tax in this little dance called the fiscal cliff. I mean, the fiscal cliff is BS. As you've said already, we have tons of investments by the government. And they also the banks you showed in your analysis, and I looked on your website, the size of these so-called too-big-to-fail banks over the last 20, 30 years has gone explosively bigger, and they're getting big, too bigger too fast. And, and, and qualify, very important qualifier. How do you get the full cooperation of government? You know, the banks, some of the banks, uh, insurance companies, and financial institutions get the full cooperation in government to do what they do. Right. The way they do it is they give government the largest percentage of the take. Okay, government may get 75% of the take, and these institutions get 25% of the take. That, they're only right. 25% massive, you know, but keep in mind now government is, uh, you know, on the, uh, you know, the, the, t- the teach of the fatted calf. Uh, you know, right. the primary player. So, you know, they create policy to give the ability to get a higher profit on their own uh, stake in the matter. But right. going back to uh, qualifying the forest, and this is a very important aspect. I mean, you know, Lindsey Williams is a very smart person. I mean, he looks at a branch or tree in the forest and expounds on it, you know, gives all, all the detail. But most of the talking heads and writers are making a critical mistake. Critical, lethal, a lethal right, mistake. Right. They're being focused on the fluttering of the branches and the trees in their face. Okay, and they're they're missing the point of the forest. Now, the following example is what the forest is. Not an example of the forest, but what it is. Okay. Right. The definition. Now, in 2007, I did a uh, tabulation of collective gross income, local, federal, enterprise income, investment income, tax income. Uh, globally, and government's collective gross income, this is federal and local from all sources, was $14.7 trillion, keyword, trillion dollars. Now, in 2007, the GDP of this country was $14 trillion. Now, someone here said, well, government was bringing 14.6 and the GDP of this country is 14. That's not possible. How can that be? Well, government in the 80s outsourced internationally. They have probably 45, 50 trillion in investments internationally, which generated about 5 trillion. Five trillion. Add that on to their domestic gross income, there's where they exceeded the GDP of the country. Wow. So, in other words, they're invested in globalism. And the new oh, world no. order. Yeah, yeah, you have to look at the basics. Once you see the basics, nothing else really matters. I mean, that exactly. is the whole point. Welcome back to the uh, New Dramatical Report. One of the uh, statements that uh, Lindsay made that I think is really important that I uh, disagree with uh, very strongly is the idea that the dollar is dead or it's going to disappear. In fact, here's where it's really going, and this is what you should pay attention to, and also in your planning. Uh, firstly, the dollar, because it makes about 87% of the world currency is U.S. dollars, either electronic or actual printed currency, it controls the market. Just like the uh, when Lord Evelyn Rothschild has morning tea in London, the London Gold Exchange sets the price of gold worldwide. Well, the U.S. dollar and the controlling banksters from the Federal Reserve, they control the movement of currency and capital over the world. And that percentage of 87% is going to soon be well over 90-something percent. And that means no matter how many Asia meetings, quote, uh, Lindsay said that they sent America home, you know, like a, you know, no point in you being here, America. We're not going to exchange or trade with you. Um, excuse me? That's not going to happen. What's really happening is China exists at America's pleasure because we've shipped our jobs there because American pension funds, city, state, federal, have invented 
many, many trillions of dollars in foreign markets, and i.e., they've moved or ex- or expropriated and and moved overseas these businesses, and they get income from them, and it's denominated in U.S. dollars. It's not possible to get rid of the dollar, but you can mutate it while you crush the middle class into a biometric currency, but you have to go to the transition. And I saw this in reports some 30 years ago from Canada, Britain, and other countries, Australia, New Zealand, all these Western countries, parts of the United Nations, and they've come up with reports. They have to have a simplified tax, a VAT. So when you hear these conservative politicians say we want a, a fair tax, a simple tax, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, it's because the globalists that are hiring them and moving them forward want a simplified tax to get rid of that bad IRS so they can reach into your bank account at any time, and then eventually you won't even need a credit card. All you need to do is stare into a machine, and they'll do an iris scan or your fingerprints, just like the March 2013 iPad where you put your fingers on the pad, and it'll recognize you from your voice print, your fingerprints, or even a retinal scan eventually. So what I see happening is we're moving toward the mark, and the mark of the beast will come from America. It is a prescient military power. It will be the prescient financial power very soon. And this little financial war going on, the dollar's not going anywhere, but it's going to mutate into the mark probably in the next four to ten years. And it'll happen in stages. We'll have them on the right and the left. They'll be hitting us with all kinds of lies, telling us on the conservative side or the Republicans or the liberal side that we eventually should come to this compromise, which will eventually be a gouging VAT, which, by the way, when they were going to bring it in Canada 30-some years ago, they were going to get rid of the income tax system in Canada, and they never did that. So Canadians get nailed with taxes, both with the government services tax on everything they buy, plus they get income taxes, etc., and just so people aren't lost uh, and don't miss out on that last comment I made, as I mentioned, in 2007, collective government, local and federal, their gross income, uh, investment income, tax income, enterprise income, both domestically and internationally, was $14.7 trillion, with right. the GDP of this country being $14 trillion. So we now have collective government exceeding the GDP of this country. And primarily, uh, it blasts through it by uh, their international holdings. Government has their investments scattered all over the globe, Russia, China, Mexico, South America, Australia, New Zealand, anywhere and everywhere. And, you know, they pulled off a five-point-something, a trillion-dollar profit in 2007 on their international holdings. It was their best rates of return. So when you add that, uh, you know, five trillion-plus onto the gross income of domestic, that's what brought them up to fourteen point seven trillion dollars. Population, you know, their 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 percentage of that was uh, that they have left over was about four trillion, four and a half trillion. So you right. have government acting as Russia. I mean, everything we were taught in grade school about Russia. Oh, Russia was bad because they own control of everything. But the United States is phenomenal because the people own and control everything. And not if you look at the numbers. Okay, and government's not going to make uh, their collective totals easily available to you. In fact, the disinformation, you know, that they'll throw out, they'll take a handful of sand from the beach and say, Look, this adds up to 1.2 million grains of sand, and oh, the water says it's totally irrelevant. I mean, okay, that's not possible. And, you know, I say, we're not talking about a hand of sand on the beach. Let's look at the whole beach. I mean, right. look at the whole beach, $14.7 uh, trillion dollars in gross income for government. And, uh, you know, a GDP of 14 trillion. The population's net, as I mentioned, after taxation was about four, uh, four and a half trillion. So we have U.S. government now collectively based on ownership and control much stronger than the Soviet Union ever was. Right. Fact, you know, that's why yeah. Trump went democratic. Yeah. He said, you know, I looked at what we were doing. He said, hey, they got better blueprint. You're talking about Mikhail Gorbachev's quote that, in fact, the blueprint of America is not only they own all of the private industry, they also are invested in the public corporations. And, in fact, the vast majority of the public corporations you quoted, that 83% plus in the stock market, uh, the derivatives market is pretty well all run privately uh, by and run basically by government major investments. Yeah, I mean, let's keep it simple. Like I said, it's just simply a takeover machine right. using any angle possible, period, to get another piece of the pie. They've been doing so collectively now for the last hundred years. And the end result right. is exactly what we're sitting with here. And to be able to do so, it was essential 
to keep the public masterfully entertained in La La Land, not look at the basics. It's income, total investments, net worth. And in fact, you poll uh, 10 million people uh, regarding their city, county, or state. How much do they bring in? Uh, no idea. What are their investment totals? Uh, no idea. What's their net worth? Uh, no idea. That was intended. That was intended. Now, you ask anyone personally, they know the answers to those questions themselves. They keep rolling in the back of their minds since they're little kids when they die. So I find it absolutely amazing they were able to create that vacuum and void in the public's comprehension. And to do so, they needed the full cooperation of syndicated media, controlled education, both political parties, to be able to pull that off. And they had 100% cooperation due to the symbiotic financial relationship and the money involved. You know, so the public has been masterfully entertained down La La Land with, you know, garbage. Uh, let's watch The Simpsons. Did O.J. do this? Did uh, Tyler Woods do this? Uh, you know, whatever. And, yeah, you know, I mean, it's a multi-trillion dollar beer operation ever expanding in the public until they start looking at the basics and realize that we're at war. We're not at war right. with Iraq, not at war with Russia, not at war with Afghanistan. We are at war with the perpetuated ignorance that has been spoon-fed us to continue the biggest game in town each and every day as it expands. But, but even, even the statement that the dollar is dead or it's going to be gone is I another misinformation. I mentioned on the break, look at a 40-year chart, pull up a 40-year chart of the dollar index, which is matched against all currencies. You'll see the dollar... It's right about where it's been for the last 40 years, you know, a little bit lower. Re relative to other currencies. So the real issue is the dollar's not going away, even though they're printing them really out of style. And the fact is there's so much money out there denominated in dollars. If they print X number of trillion dollars, it has virtually no inflative effect at all. The inflation's going to come from taxes that are going to... The inflation's not going to come from the inflated amount of currency printed. It's going to come from these stupid taxes because they say that we're, if, we're, in, if the, we're in the red. If fair tax, if they implement a fair tax... Instantly, that goes on as uh, uh, inflation. Right. So, in other words, the message to Bonner is no more taxes, no more deals, no more uh, debt ceiling changes, and definitely don't give the, the blank check to Bernanke uh, and, to, and to Geithner, who's literally asking for a blank check so that the president doesn't even need a congressional override. This is craziness, and it's to uh, this, this will be the sort of inflation because, in fact, when you have what we have so far, which is a contracting credit, we should be having deflation. We've had deflation in the value of real estate. So rather than fix the real estate bubble, for example, by allowing real estate to be re-evaluated at a lower valuation and then allow people to keep their equity. So if, let's say, a home dropped $200,000 and a person had 200000 equity, let them keep their equity and let the valuation of the home drop and the mortgage uh, still on the property. That would have been a sensible thing, but the government's not going to do that because they've invested in the mortgage-backed securities because they play this Ponzi game using this, and they're uh, buying $40 they billion dollars plus. They a lot of money as they did. Yeah. Exactly. So the, they don't want to fix the problem. They want to rape the public, and this is what it's about. So neither party is doing the right thing. Not another dollar in taxes, number one. And number two, you don't need to destroy the social safety net or our military. You and, need to oh, rearrange right, right, the books. I hope you have an economy based on, on tax. tax yeah, back and back in one second, and you'll give all the answers. Welcome back, and uh, Lindsay, I want you to kind of lay, uh, Lindsay Williams, uh, kind of uh, uh, analysis, basically, uh, I think is is uh, really very scary to people. They think there's nothing you can do, it's, it's the end is near, and all this stuff. Look, every problem we have, if you get aside and you analyze it with a, your clear intellect, and then you go off and pray, and what I see is I see America that returns to its, its uh, conservative, Republican, and the basis of our economy, which is why it's so prosperous when it get rid of the, the uh, overlords of the bankers from Britain. That's why the founders of America knew that the, they feared not an invading army. They feared bankers that would get control of the levers of power. The fact is the bankers are controlled both parties, the Republic crap and the Democrat. And uh, they're trying to get through Bonner the idea that maybe if we lay $800 billion, and that's not enough, by the way. The rules have changed now. Obama wants a blank check for the uh, debt ceiling and $1.6 trillion, not $800 billion over 10 years. There's no end to it. And the fact is that lay out your solution because you have a really a novel solution. No taxes at all, number one. Number two, the government's run on cash and on their own investments in the market, which they already have. 
And uh, the population would then expand well, so the number of people needing help would dramatically drop. We wouldn't destroy the social safety net. You'd have a prosperous economy because it's people and innovators that have the capital that can generate more jobs. And, and uh, for, and for the cash rolling in for the government from their investment returns on the... Uh, right, on just like the, the, the... And Romney knows how this worked. I mean, people had lots of reasons why, because he didn't have the personality. He only stuck to one issue. But the fact is he was one of the only one who was going to lower taxes. He was the only one that was talking, but he didn't talk about your plan, which is the best plan yet. It's better, It's you know, you put in things like Glass-Steagall, which is a law, but you've got to go beyond that. And that's why I even proposed this idea of an of the electronic encrypted barter unit, and I'm uh, talking to some software companies about the idea of setting up a company to do that. Uh, it you would be very you, simple. Do you mind if I make a delusional comment? Sure. Okay, uh, this is a sectional and delusional. But say, for example, the last election... 65% of the people wrote in my name for president. The only thing we have been hearing since uh, uh, from the day one when I won the election was uh, the consolidation of the investment uh, trust and assets, the phasing out of taxation until it's gone, building up uh, the wealth base of the population uh, for their productivity value uh, right. and investment wealth, thus to generate a phenomenal, I mean, blockbuster economy. Which uh, the returns on our investment funds are going to go right through the roof, so we can then become lean, efficient, and everyone's making a hell, a hell of a lot of money. Everyone's on the same page. We have right. financial and industrial cartels on the same page. We have government administration on the same page, and we have the population on the same page. And, and by the way, we we, we stopped investing in years. We stop also investing uh, dramatically in globalism, although it doesn't mean it cuts them completely, but it cuts down dramatically, that it makes it much more sense, especially with America no longer restrained in producing its own gas and oil fields, that we have industry back in America with new robotic factories run by Americans. We're making more of our goods here in clean factories without polluting the environment. And we have an economy that's producing real goods and services and cutting-edge medical and other therapies so people have medical tourism here rather than the danger with Obamacare of 30% plus of doctors that are within five years of retirement quitting. What we have is a complete mismanagement of the economy that's contracting credit, destroying business, and crushing the middle class. And I guarantee you, out of this uh, debacle between the uh, GOP, etc., the fear-mongering that I hear from people like Lindsay just feeds into the idea there's nothing you can do, they're going to destroy you, you won't be able to pay your mortgage. No, we need to start thinking out of the box. We need to start saying, are we going to start electronic bartering? Are we going to start setting up state banks? Are we going to start uh, deciding to no longer invest in the globalist system? And that means no more taxes or dramatically reduce taxes so that we, just like Romney said, we can actually build up an economy. Then the government has revenue so we don't destroy our social safety net. We don't sequester our military so we can't even do operations overseas. And we don't do stupid wars either, but we have to remain strong in order to even be able to project power around well, the world and well, make well, keep well, a stable well, world. What I mentioned, what I, what I mentioned about putting the government on uh, self-sufficiency here in the United States, that's applicable all over the world, Russia, China, Australia. And if everybody was following the same principle, you wouldn't have any wars. There would be no wars. Yeah, the wars come out of the wars come out of these economic situations, don't they? Every war, first world war, second world war, all the major wars going right back to ancient Babylon, all come back to this idea of economy and sequestering the resources from the public by extracting them. What Nimrod did in the ancient Bible in Genesis, he would have his own people cause destruction, and then he sent his armies to get rid of the rabble that he actually sent in to destroy the cities. And the same dialectics going on: you send in the terrorists, you disrupt an economy, and you go in and send an army to get rid of the terrorists, then you take over, put in your proxy uh, puppet uh, regime, and you extract the wealth out of the country. This is what we did well, me, to let Egypt. Let me get a the, point in here. It's very important. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, when they extracted the wealth from the uh, population, it was done by force, trickery, and just outright, you know, uh, take. Right. Okay. Under what I was talking about, having a cash and investment society, you're still taking money from the population, but not taking it by force or by extortion or by non-disclosure. Mm -hmm. It's based right. on a thriving economy. Right. The public, you know, when they're uh, buying goods, buying services, uh, they're generating the higher returns on the investment funds, which now goes in the government. So that's why it is so damn important to do that, because you change the intent of government, not to use, use the public as a productivity resource to be drained and managed, but to see the population as prosperous and as wealthy as possible.
Yeah, in other words, you change the whole modus. In other words, government can only prosper if the public prospers. Right now, government's prospering if it prints money out of thin air and if it sucks the public dry just like a vampire draining the last pint of blood from someone so they die. That's what government's now behaving like. Under this basis, now you have a thriving economy because all the financial industrial cartels are exploding because people are buying their goods and products because they have more money to buy goods and products. Investment right. returns go right through the roof. Win for all involved. You just have to make it happen. And you got the boys, you know, so, uh, you know, well taken for the last 10,000 years, been very happy with extortion rackets, non disclosure, and playing. Uh, well, this is why they, they, the Japanese, after they went through what we are being forced through now by both parties, 25 years ago, have had a stagnated economy for 25 years. This is what they're trying to do to Europe now. Saddling with debt created out of thin air to destroy their economy and crush them, contract the credit and then crush the middle class, and we have people committing suicide, jumping off bridges. Yeah. I remember the last year. And the whole year. show is being run by attorneys. You have 70% attorneys in politics, governors, senators, congressmen, and right. so forth. And they're greedy little guys there. I mean, they're just taking the money, right. easy money, expanding people's... easy money, and running with it. Well, what I heard is that the average person that is entering retirement has such little savings that with all the social safety net, they're basically destitute. Now, the government wants to expand that. Under Obama, he has put the pedal to the metal, and he is a communist, corporatist shill for this disaster that they're trying to do. They're trying to disaster. The bigger disaster. the population is, it, the easier it is to take money from. Right. Okay, and also, you know, they want to disarm the population. You know, thieves. But it, it goes beyond money, though, because right. because thieves it's a smaller pie. It's not a it's not a bigger pie where the government gets more wealth or more money. It's a smaller pie because ultimately their goal isn't just controlling the money. It's control. They want to eventually reduce the population by killing off up to ninety percent of the population of the planet. These globalists are pushing things. I watched the first few minutes, and then I got too nauseated watching it. Called the Prophets of Doom of the Twenty First Century, a new series on H two on History Channel, and I think, these idiots are still pushing this stuff about fossil fuels and peak energy. First, not only do we have the need of oil for petrochemicals and so on, we have literally limitless oil, but we also have tokamak fusion energy technology and other kinds of alternative energy coming in. Uh, my nephew is involved with a company up in San Francisco that's developed this technology for co- for compressing, using compressed air to store energy from wind, power, solar, whatever, and it's already proven. So, there's, to be honest with you, not only the alternative energy, but even the advanced stuff that's classified, like tokamak fusion nuclear reactors, it's, fusion it's reactors, all, it's, the it's power of the stars. The profit for the gang. It's, right. It's, they don't want to have it's, limitless it's, energy available, and we'll still have hydrocarbons for chemicals, etc. They want to tell you there's there's want and 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 and, and less resources mm-hmm. because this is the British modus of controlling the population: keep the resources in the ground, lie to the public, make sure they don't have enough land to grow like, even food on, keep it down, and keep it down the basics, okay? If a thief right. okay, came to you, Dr. Bill, robbed your house, robbed you, took your car, cleaned out your bank account, and kept coming back every week and every month and every year doing the exact same thing without any consequence whatsoever, he's going to increase his take. He's going to keep taking more. And you know, somebody would have to question your, your sanity for allowing him to do so. Right, but one one, one year if you arrive, he arrives and you have your shotgun there, and he decides to start taking things, and you put a very big hole in them, and he doesn't get to take anything. That's what the public needs to do. You need to say no more money for you, like the soup Nazis on Seinfeld. No more soup for you, Obama. No more taxes. You, you, you saw what happened in Libya, uh, Syria, Egypt, and so forth. You know why that was? They were able to disrupt and take over those countries. They had very small prisons in Libya, Syria, and uh, in Egypt. Okay, right. And when the people revolted, they weren't all arrested and thrown into jail. That's what happened here in the United States. We have all the prisons we need to throw everybody into jail. Okay? That's how they get away with it. They just keep locking people up at a check. Yeah. Well, there should be enough people ticked off that they can't, don't have enough prisons even here in America. Thank you, Walter. We're going to have you back on regularly again. Go to Capra One and donate. Welcome back to hour number two, and um, 
We're going to go uh, open lines here, 800-259-5791, and we have some more comments by Walter Burian. Again, I want to make this important statement, CAFR1, C-A-F-R-1.com, and it's important to make donations also to the CAFR1 website. The information you're going to get there is unique. He sees the forest from the trees. He comes up with real solutions. And, I, you know, part of it is Glass-Steagall, but it goes well beyond the reports and, and recommendations even of Lyndon LaRouche. What you're talking about is a restructuring of the economy so the government doesn't become a parasite of economy. It becomes a commensal like a probiotic bacterium in the gut of, of the body politic of society instead of a blood-sucking tick or a vampire. So uh, you had a good idea, Walter. Tell us about it. Right. Uh, we should all, all pick out one company that exclusively manufactures baseball bats. Okay. <laughs> Buy stock in it. And then everybody, everybody... Buy a nice little Louisville Slugger baseball bat. And when you walk around town, go anywhere, just carry, have your little baseball bat, use it as a little walking stick, you know. But everyone's going to say, why are you carrying a baseball bat? No, I'm just giving a message to the government. And, uh, you know, all of a sudden, you know, you get five people walking around town, then 100 people walking around town with their baseball bat, and then 1,000 people walking around town with their baseball bat. Baseball bat up on their dashboard when they're driving down the street where 100 people say, well, I think I got a baseball bat in his dashboard. You know, baseball bats, you know, unless you're going to use it as a weapon, you know, it's not illegal to carry a uh, baseball bat, so they, they can't stop you there. And, you know, as that image starts, uh, you know, building up all around the country, you know, it has two things. You know, number one, you're not using it as a weapon, but if you happen to, you uh, you know, that goes back into the 20s. Uh, you go after somebody with a baseball bat, they're not too lucky. I would put on the uh, side of the bat uh, maybe a tagline, something like, whack the tax. In other words, you know the government, when it comes together for a, quote, a bipartisan solution, the solution is two wolves deciding what kind of chicken they're going to have for dinner. It turns out that the public are considered chickens. Yeah, just put no more taxation. No more taxation, period. No more tax. Yeah. No more tax on the side. The it's fact more, is we don't yeah, need more tax in the middle of a recession depression with the economy is growing at 1.4%. It's like uh, a terminal velocity to get an aircraft like the Wright Brothers off the ground. Under 1.4% growth, there's no way to get enough lift in the economy to not fall, have it fly apart. And that's the danger, that the globalists are getting so greedy that they're sucking so much life out of the real economy and innovation they're literally destroying the healthcare system. They're going to destroy innovation in small and medium yeah, business. And, and, They're going to frighten yeah, and, and, it, and outsource to, to third world countries even more business. And as a result, you're going to see a crash and burn, and then more and more people are going to get desperate. And then, of course, Obama and the idiots want a, a no debt ceiling. So for a period of several years, they'll just print money to provide all the people. Now they're stuck on food stamps or on on on. Uh, uh, these you know emergency funds in order to keep people from starving or not having an apartment, and eventually the dollar will get devalued and nobody will be able to afford anything. And the government will say, "Well, the coverage spare." Yeah. The problem is that this can, is not a they, solution. As, yeah, as they continue to rape the person, the individuals individually, most people feel like they're by themselves. They're to themselves. They feel alone, uh, isolated. Right. But keep in, keep in mind, if uh, all of a sudden you see a lot of more people carrying baseball bats, using them as like a little walking cane. Yeah, yeah, you're, you know, you're a funny everyone guy. Everyone you see do them. Everyone you see do them. Well, you know, you know. Well, the, you I'll know, tell you what the baseball you know. bat really is, besides that symbol. The baseball bat is, in ancient times, with caravans or whatever, people would barter. Uh, they moved to the tally stick, which was actually used longer than even gold or silver for a means of, of tallying the transfer of wealth from one group to another. The problem is when government got into the idea of taxation, especially after the wars, this is supposed to be a temporary thing to pay for the, for the war. And what's happened is the government has decided that they're not only going to acquire all this wealth, they're going to invest back in and take over the private corporations. So all these so-called corporations that have got rights to the individual by Supreme Court ruling are now being invested in by quote, government, and now the government controls and owns everything. That's why I get a kick out of it. People say, well, what's the New World Order? The New World Order is government that owns the globalization of industry. So that when people say in right. Michigan they're up in arms about the right to rules to work states like Indiana, and they have to change uh, so the people have the right to decide whether they're going to be in a union or not, the reason why they're union breaking is because the state of Michigan and the state of Indiana and the United States and cities and towns are 
are invested in globalism. Why do they think that they're, bra- they're union breaking? It's not because the governor is doing it. He's doing it out of trying to survive because they know that business will move to Indiana because Indiana has already made the first move to say, hey, we know that everybody's invested in globalism to want to outsource this to, Ind- to uh, Indonesia or China or India. Mm-hmm. So they already know that the, what the game is. The game is rape and pillage America break the unions, and eventually make people make so little money they can't even afford an apartment. So yeah, I agree with Lindsay on that, but the fact is, the solution is really simple. you got to start getting back to what you talked about, which is to fix the primary problem. We have government now as a giant parasite sucking the blood out of the public, and right. instead making a strong, vibrant economy as the basis for a refurbished world. Yep. We have a very small <laughs> social safety net because everybody's taken care of. And if you look at the population as being a dog and government as being the tick, uh, we have a 50-pound dog with a 200-pound tick that's dragging around. The big problem, but, uh, isn't it? unless you have I mean, a very I got, strong I got, dog. I got a question for you. I got a question yeah. for you. Yes. So everyone started, uh, you know, carrying, uh, you know, walking with their baseball bat and displaying it on their dashboards and everything else. How long do you think it'll take? You know, politicians get nervous. How long do you think it'll take before a city passes in an ordinance? You cannot carry a baseball bat. A baseball bat's a deadly weapon. How long do you think it would take before they pass that statute? Uh, they try to. I don't know how they'd stop it. I mean, the same way, let's put it this way. If, if let's say, just let me put up some, some provisos. Let's say February 2013, Obama manages to sign the Small Arms Treaty, despite objections from the Senate, which requires a majority of 60 votes, and uh, despite the, uh, the protests from, from the Congress, which are Republican pro-gun. Um, there is no way in hell that the federal government with a well-fed, populated public that's not dying of a plague or a war, will ever let their arms go. And gotta, you, gotta, don't even, you don't even need to start a civil war. I mean, the police wouldn't be stupid enough to start, to start disarming the public. If they are started going house to house to disarm the public, uh, it wouldn't take very long before the police department itself would be surrounded. It's just not going to question, happen. Man. So the, the fact is that this is, they're trying to use hubris. It's all fear tactics. The same way when Lindsay says, well, they're going to devalue the dollar in four years, it'll be gone. No, the dollar, the globalists try to mutate it because they're actually playing an economic war. They're actually going to mutate it to the damn mark of the beast. And the most powerful nation on earth military now is America. America, now the, the reason why Russia and China won't take on America is multifold. I remember having a discussion with a senior engineer at Storage Tech in northern Denver. Because it took care of all these classified companies, okay? And I personally, the, he worked in the Russian rocket systems as one of their senior engineers. And he told me, we're always so afraid of you, America, because you gave us so much technology and even nuclear materials. We knew that in the back room you had even more advanced weapons. If we dared ever go to war with you, you'd push a button and we'd cease to exist. And I said, you were wise, because we do. Yeah, and I, I can pull to a four-star general underground at July 10th, 1994. He said, we have weapons space-based and land-based weapons that literally control the power of the planet that if we want to trigger off an earthquake, a volcano, a superstorm or if we want to create a plasma explosion over any city or town within minutes without firing a missile or one bullet we can destroy an entire nation like China or Russia without firing one bullet or one missile centuries ahead of anyone else so the the idea, the, the vain idea, we're being destroyed from the inside. That's why when I had the conversation with Jonathan Cotton, I won't have him back on, because he says America is being destroyed because of this and that. And he won't deal with the fact it's being destroyed from corruption inside. Both the Republican Party and the Democratic Party are so corrupt and won't get out of their own way. And then we have what I call libertarianism, which is also crazy. Okay, There's some aspects that are good, but the idea that states have the rights to even determine the right of the unborn, etc., and it, austerity fascism is good, like Ryan trying to talk about it. Austerity is not the solution. We have tons of everything. No one needs to go without a full belly and a roof over their head, and they don't need the big government control to do it. Got to make you for you when you get back. Yep. And yeah, I want to, want to raise that. And if we don't have the church, it shouldn't be shunned over any political issue either. She shouldn't care about the 501c3 garbage. Back in a moment. And yes. 
Yes, uh, we're having the pleasure of having Walter Burian on uh, for extended time. And it's open lines, 800 259 5791. If you want to make a comment on this or any wellness issues, and we have some amazing new nutraceuticals. Walter, you have a question, and hopefully I can give a short answer, not a rant. And then you can okay. rant <laughs> this, about this the, my, the solution. This is my second question to you, Dr. Bill, on a basic. Why uh, do you think corrupt politicians and judges and attorneys? do not like the public being armed. And they're trying to destroy the Second Amendment, uh, limit weapons, confiscate weapons. Why do you think they're doing that? Because they want to do something so horrendous they know that the response of the public will be a revolution. Well, I, I, I boil it down a little simpler. Uh, a thief does not like armed prey. Right, but they I don't want prey. I, I, uh, I've seen it on my on the air because I've had threats, uh, death down, threats down, against me and my family. Let, let me finish though. I've had death threats from my family and on air, and I've done three things. Number one, I track their IP address. I ask the local legal authorities to to go on and, and abscond and grab these people, and I've also threatened them on air that if you're stupid enough to get through our gated community and try to harass me and my family, I won't say hello. I'll blow your brains out before you even get up the driveway. Now I tell people that to say not that I'm a maniac because I don't believe in in and doing that, and I'm not a violent person, but if I think someone's going to do something, well, there's going to be consequences. Now, that's why we have fools, narcissistic fools like Obama, that thinks he's going to pass, without the congressional or Senate approval, the arms treaty, the small arms treaty for the United States, because they eventually want to take this, because what they're planning on doing is so bad, to quote the middle class of the population of America, they know that an armed revolt will happen. And, it, and they no, know it won't happen the right, regular way. It won't, by the way, it won't be a big, long thing. The, firstly, we know that most of the military and the police and so on will be on our side. There's going to be such a tiny minority of people, and even if they brought in foreign troops from Russia or China or elsewhere to come in, it'll be like throwing raw meat into a meat grinder. There's no way, with all the armies on Earth, you could take on the armed American public as long as they have a full belly and they're, and they're able to take care of themselves. Americans will never be put down. And it doesn't matter yeah. how dependent they make us, it's not going to happen. It doesn't matter how many laws they pass, this is one thing that's not going to disappear. And by the way, the same happens in Canada. People tried it up in Canada, and Canadians have, believe it or not, as much or more guns than they do in the States. A lot of people think, oh, Canadians aren't armed. This is not Australia and, and U.S. and Canada. This is not New Zealand and other countries in Europe where you can't get a gun. Yes, you can get guns. And they use it for killing wild animals or going game hunting, but they also have personal protection. And in the places like New York City and New Jersey, we don't have personal protection. You have rape, you have pillaging, and they, 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 they prey on people because they know they won't be carrying a weapon. Yeah, as I said before, again, yes, thieves do not like armed prey, but unarmed right. prey are finger-looking good. They are indeed. And that's why I stopped and, the whole And also, because keep, keep, in, keep in mind, keep in mind, what the government's doing is they make everything now a felony. Anything right. you do is a felony. And when you get the felony, say, for example, you have a hostile uh, ex, and she gets an order of protection against you. The first thing they do is they serve you an order of protection saying, turn in all of your firearms within 24 hours. You get a felony. Right. You cannot possess firearms. So they're trying to create as many felonies, many order of protections as possible, to grab everybody's guns. Exactly. Yeah, that's why, for example, the greatest growth industry is returning veterans that may have a PTSD or a temporary psychological problem in readjusting, and they lose their ability to bear arms when they've actually been deployed two and three, four times in theaters of war, which is ridiculous. They come back, and of course, the government considers yeah. the veterans that are returning as the most dangerous people because they can, quote, take over a building with a dinner fork and a knife. Uh, they don't even need to quote a conventional weapon. They've been trained out of fight. I've talked to a lot of lieutenants captains, colonels in California over the last right. 20 years. They passed the assault weapons ban in California. Now, all of these guys have their AR-15s and their, you know, uh, automatic uh, rifles and so forth. Yeah. Uh, semi-automatic rifles. And, you know, I asked them, I said, well, what are you going to do if they tell you to turn your arms? He said, not going to do it. I said, what are, they, what are you going to do if they come and take it? And they always said, just let them try Right. Now, I talk to military. I, I'm in what I call Marine Town, which is between San Marcos, Vista, Oceanside, okay, just south of Pendleton Marine Corps Base. And mm -hmm. the veterans, they're taught this, and it's ingrained right into their DNA, that that weapon is like your right leg. You take care of that weapon, you pop that weapon apart in so many minutes and put it back together and clean it, because if it misfires or it doesn't work properly, you're dead. So this weapon, and I've worked the same with vets in Georgia and Illinois, you don't 
talk about taking uh, someone's weapon when they've been so attached to it it's like their soother you try to pull that weapon from them it's part of their dna when they've been deployed for say three or four uh, yeah. tours or two tours in a, in a battlefield or a war zone it's cruel and it's also stupid because these people are the backbone of what a civilian militia will be will be these people under the share of a proper yeah. and they chain also, of command they also know. yeah they yeah. also know that weapon is very effective in protecting their family and their friends and their right. neighbor. If I was going to get my list of weapons that I would recommend, first weapon would be a shotgun. Number one, by for a big twelve gauge rifle. Twelve gauge, 12 gauge rifle shotgun. And a, yeah, twelve gauge shotgun. Number one, and also by the way, buy also armor piercing and other types of advanced uh, armaments. Second thing that I would recommend that people do is they get a longer range weapon. Uh, you know, like a, we talked about this with John Moore, 30, 30, yeah, yeah, something like that. Uh, and I don't really, uh, I'm not that keen on the idea of handguns. What are you going to do with a handgun, you know? Uh, if you can, you can have a concealed carry permit, but if you get in a situation, those are good for if you're traveling to some place like where you, you think you could be in personal danger coming out of a, your car or whatever, and you're going shopping or whatever. So that's a, you know, a small use of that. But the main weapon you want for protection if things really go crazy, number one is a shotgun and a long range weapon. Uh, also be exotic, get in crossbows, uh, uh, slingshots. Uh, a slingshot with ball bearings is just as effective as a gun. You can buy thousands yeah, most, of ball bearings you know, and use a high-powered you know, slingshot, and if you get really good at it, you can uh, you can hit somebody with a ball bearing with a high-powered slingshot pretty damn accurately. You know what the most important and most powerful weapon there is that anyone can have? The truth. <laughs> their, their mind. Yeah, their mind, mind, exactly. Their mind. Well, that's why really good warriors are able to, you know, scare the, you know, if the other people think you're unpredictable, but they know exactly that you're you're the big bad bear, you're not Bambi, you're not going to roll over, you're not going to you're, you're you know. People just, should you, study the Warsaw Ghetto. They should study the Warsaw Ghetto from you know World War Two. Right. The right. Germans threw everything they had at them and couldn't take them out, so they ended up having to wall off the entire you know blocks and blocks of the Warsaw Ghetto because right. they couldn't. You know, and if right. you look at what the people did in the Warsaw Ghetto to fight back, it's a very important example and lesson to learn. Yeah, exactly. Now, so Walter, here let's lay out the solution. Solution number one: things like straight, like uh, the um, uh, Glass Steagall is the first step. Secondly, is state banks. Uh, thirdly, electronic bartering. Fourthly, a revolt by the public against the congressmen and senators that want to raise any taxes. Absolutely no transferring of the so-called debt ceiling to the presidency, which is out of control. Yep. Obama is crazy. When you, when, you, when you cover the aspect of uh, not raising taxes, you should always mention in the same breath, Eliminating, not, not I think exactly reason. elimination of taxes and actually restructuring the economy so it's based on the idea that the public will gain wealth. They actually did an analysis in the last four years, ten years, of the reduction in actual wealth assets of the public, and I think it's it's unbelievable how much people have lost in equity in homes, their personal savings. What we have is an entire generation of people that are heading toward retirement, and they don't have money to take care of themselves because if, if the government basically has blank checks, ends up not. It all, it, it all boils down to what Al Capone used to say back in the 30s. He always used to say, "What do we do and fight government? Let us become government, and we'll take whatever we want. The rest exactly. is exactly.